Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's Equipment Autopsy, we're taking apart this Overland Storage Neo Series full rack giant robot case. And we're here with Hi. Harvey. Yes, indeed. All the way from Australia. All the way. <laughs> like 29 hours worth of plane flights. And worth it? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. You've been I don't know about getting weeks. back, but <laughs> it's, it's the same back, but yeah. So we've been cleaning out the robotics lab. Yes. And we came across this. Now we got this donated, uh, we've had it for like a year or two. Yep. And it's pretty much useless. It's just a big tape array. What would this have been originally used for? Massive data archiving. Okay. Um, and as we get into it, you'll see. But mm -hmm. like inside, we don't, we don't need this. We don't need this. Inside, there is nothing but a whole lot of drawers. Now, I okay. think they're all locked. No, no, we had them falling out. Oh, we had them falling out. Ah, here's one. Okay. So, inside, oh. we can't, we can only show it from this side, which kind of sucks, but this is just a whole bunch of little trays. Each one yeah. of these would hold a tape data cartridge. Okay. Now, tape data is really cool because you can store a lot of stuff on it. Mm -hmm. But the access time is really long yeah. because you have to find the tape, you have to get the tape, you have to load the tape, and then the actual data transfer off the tape okay. is pretty slow. So, so, so it this is for sucks. infrequent but long-term storage. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is like um, if you own a television studio yes. and you want to archive all your air check tapes, Makes sense. excellent system. And most TV stations used to mm -hmm. have like, it, it, this is a baby robot because they'd have big Umatic tape yeah. decks and you'd see robots. Yeah. If you ever see the old movie Hackers, yeah, I mean, they we've show all seen that shot. Yep. Yeah, so this is what that is. This is what that is okay. on a much smaller scale. Okay, cool. We have absolutely no use for this. Mm -hmm. And because we have the problem of very finite amount of building, mm -hmm. infinite amount of donations, yep. we can't keep it. Okay. But there's a really nifty mechanism inside that I want to keep for the robotics lab to yeah. go along with the inverted pendulum thing that we've got going on. Okay. So this big shaft right here, I want that. Okay. I want the big shaft and everything else. So the, the everything else we don't care yeah. about because Amazing. it really it's just trays. Okay. And at the back there's half a dozen tape drives that mm -hmm. we'll get to take out and and the robot and that's it. We don't cool. care about all the storage, we don't care about the drives, we care about the robot. Yeah. Everything else is crap. So we're looking to save any control controlling systems we can, any of the mechanism we can. The rest of the tape stuff can go away. Yeah, it's all just crap. Cool. So Excellent. all right, so with that let's get started. You want to take off this side, I'll take off this side? Uh yeah. All right. Now, Harvey will already know this, but you guys at home, if you're taking off a big side panel like this, it's a good idea to save the top two screws for last so that you can work down here safely and not worry about dropping the thing on your head because that sucks. Just like that. Hey, Harvey. Yeah. I didn't hear a big boom from your side. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to rush you or anything. Hey, I think there's tapes in here. Nope, there aren't. That's just the thing. Had a moment. Okay. So what do you got? Huh? What have you got? I thought I had tapes. I got the I same. Didn't. I would imagine it looks pretty similar to mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, we need a bucket or something for putting screws in. Where are you dropping your screws? Uh, on the floor. Oh, okay. <sighs> Have you got your safety rated non-penetration shoes on? Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. I wore my pretty blue shoes. Excellent. I wanted to be pretty. Good. All right, let's spin this around so they can see it because now we got to do a lot in the back. All right, you are by trade a professional locksmith. I'm a locksmith. I wouldn't okay. say professional. Wow, well, okay. You just got keys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Takes the door off. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, we have a lot of power supplies, and these are simple ATX power supplies. Yeah. So we can just pull them out like that. But if we're really smooth, hang you on. Take the whole system? We can take the whole the whole dingus. And that could have applications somewhere. Yeah. So while you're doing, you work on the power supplies, cool. and I'll work on the central panels and stuff. Ah! 
So you got this easy. Really? I gotta do it with my left hand. <laughs> Oh! There's oh. two screws. Oh. Figured that out. I got it sorted. Something tells me hey, I should have brought I some fingers glasses. over there. I don't know about glasses, but I had a moment there where I wished I had an armor plated glove. Oh. Oh, that's oh. a number one. Uh, we have a number one sitting there. All right. I'm going to do all the twos first. Okay. Don't drop that on my head, okay? Why? I'm headed low. You'll be fine. You say that. You'll be fine. Oh, we need a straight blade screwdriver too. A what? We don't have a straight blade screwdriver. Uh, I don't think there's one there. Yeah. Kind of no. jank, low budget operation is it? Oh. Here, break these loose. There will be six of them. Is that in there? Okay. Do you want all of those? Yep. Everything goes. Oh. Yep, that's forever. Okay. <laughs> you know what that is? Oh, you're using the impact drop. I'm using the right bit. They're just not liking me. Eh. Oh. Wow. There's some neat bits in here. Those are all loose? Are these? All yep. right, I'm going to start taking them out. Oh. Hey, Arby. Yeah. Oh, you did the bottoms too. I know, right? You're so good to me. I know. I got nothing but love for you. Yep. It's like when you said everything goes, it's like I listened or something. Uh, that's not going back in. Now, what you got there? What's the back look like? Uh, oh, Molex. So we got some clothes. Molex connections. The main look like motherboard. You, could, you might actually be able to use that for a regular motherboard. Ooh! There's a drive. So we've got... What do you reckon? Is that a standard 24 pin? Huh? That's uh, 20 pin with the other four disconnected. Yeah. It looks like standard motherboard. That'd be pretty cool. What right. is that? This is a tape drive. For the... Oh, okay. This, the, for oh, the cartridges? So that's this is one where the they, they go in. Yeah. yeah, this is how you read and write the tape drive. Okay. Um, they've had the doors removed, huh. but they appear pretty stuck. We'll look at these in detail after. Cool. So, set the, so yeah, we'll set those over in a pile there. Oh. Save those itty bitty plugs. Yeah. Oh man, are those useful. I was wondering how someone would sit there and jam those in. Turns out they just pull them out. those have drives in them or not? Or have uh, power supplies in them or not? It has a similar similar looking setup. Is it heavy? Back. If it's really light, it's empty. It's Molex connections on the back. All right. You know how you disconnect those, right? Yeah, we cut them. No, no. Watch, watch. Oh, God. You look and make sure. OK, you got to take these. You got to squeeze okay. and take out properly. Delicately. Is this one where Gently. I have to hold the cabinet? No. Oh. Huh? You know why? Okay. Inertia. Okay. See? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> no wonder you don't work at a computer shop anymore. All right. I did all right. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, I know I have to keep these cables, so yeah, can you but disconnect we those? Yeah, but we can just unplug them. Yeah, can you disconnect those? Oh, look at those. Those are the 20 amp version. Oh, God. All right. Those are all you. Now you just got to figure out how to feed them through there. Nope. That'll be crazy easy. Uh -huh. Fit right through. Something no problem at all. Fit through the other way. All right. Well, that's a problem. Right now. Oh, those are totally pleasant. You wanted to unplug those before you took screws out. Why? It's easy. Why? Because it doesn't move. Okay, that's all the drives. Let 
Yeah, that's not happening. These are both really stripped down. I'm going to try it. See if I can get anywhere with it. If you're Not really gentle, they might be okay. Nope. We need we need a couple number ones. Sure, you don't just need to know how to work that one properly. Take a look at the end of that. Ah, that's fine. Yeah, that's it's just been right used out. to just been used on an impact driver for a number two. <laughs> It's fine. Pick that one out. Huh? On the side there, you can see it's held from that. Stuck on. Ah, uh, there's a big box on the back of it. Hang on, there's plugs and stuff. Yeah. All right, you're unplugged mostly. You're totally unplugged now. Absolutely safe. But it's a. Uh... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a. Uh... These got to come out. Watch out. You do that, and the whole thing is just super easy. Got it. That was easy. Came right out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there's some of that sexy caterpillar track hey. with the wires down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get that out of here. Victory. It doesn't take much to keep you happy, does it? I'm really, I'm a simple guy. Yeah. Ha <laughs> I am victorious. Hey, Harvey. Yeah. Here. Come here. What do you got for me? Oh, I got just what you need. You are the Terminator. That's a SCSI Terminator. Uh -huh. You know what a SCSI Terminator is? No. Really? No idea. Well, you got to look that up. Guys, check out the Wikipedia article right here and learn what a SCSI Terminator is. It's one of those things that sounds way cooler than it really is. Yeah, because it's a SCSI Terminator. I'm, I'm sure it follows along with its naming convention. Does something to terminate a SCSI line? It's a little electrical widget with resistors in it. Okay. Do you know why I don't know what a SCSI Terminator is? Because you're a locksmith and you just cut kids. All right, so we've got we got all the stuff off the back, really. Um, you want to spin yeah, around? I think so. All right. Um, we've got this last last little bit of framing to get off. Yeah, but that's like one big. You want to? Okay. I don't. Where would you like to spin it? 
I don't think we're going to get the big frame off at this point. I think okay. we got to let's start digging in from the front. Well, is everything else disconnected from it? All right. Something I discovered as yeah. we were going is these little widgets here. Yeah. Push that shut. And it locks. Yeah. Absolutely. This, if you twiddle the bit and yeah. actuate the solenoid, now open. Ta-da! It's actually right. got a really cool little system in there. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a little optical sensor. There's the wiper mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. And then there's this latch, which is just a ball detent latch. Yeah. And then this is the latch which locks the door shut. Yeah. Um, so can you take that right out? Is yeah. there... I don't look... Yeah, I don't... Hang on, hang on. Yeah, push that in. Yep. All right, let's do that six times. Ready? Go. Yep. Oh, that one's not coming in. We'll just leave them sticking out for now. There's a way to push them back in, but. Okay. Next one. Go. There will be a little latch on the inside that we got to push, like the ones that go out. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, let's do the back. All right, now let's figure these out. There's going to be a thing. It's going to be back about here. Ah, here, look, look. In the back, yeah. lift this up. No, I lied. Nope. You're you're lying to me. Why would you do that? That. Okay, I got nothing. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Watch this. Lift this up. Yeah. And then push the inner part back. And it just you're, it you're just lying goes. To me again. No, I just did the top one. Uh huh. You just got to do it kind of sharpish. You got to want it. But this piece goes in. So you're telling me it doesn't work, and I've just done it four times. Oh, it's centralized. I thought you said lift it up. No, you got to, the yeah, back you piece, have, yeah. You don't have to worry about the inner. It's just that back piece centralized. Oh, OK. Yeah, see, look at that. Sorted that whole thing out right there. Cool. Now, how do we get this out? Uh, do you want to spin it? Huh? Do you want to spin it? Let's, yeah, let's spin it so the world can see. All right, how do we get... Okay, I've got, I got a screw out here, so that one there will need to come out. All right. And so will the opposite one. Oh, that's, that's a joy. You can do it. Yeah, nope, that nope, did bottom it. One, bottom one, Where? Same place. I don't have bottom one. Yeah, you do. Maybe it's... Bi oh, yeah, you got to go digging for it. Got it. You want to grab cables? Oh, I got one. Uh, here. Somewhere. D hang on, hang on, hang on. Here, just. No. Oh, oh, it goes right the way back. Yeah, but you can unplug it right here. <sighs> Spread. Hang on. You got to move forward so I can see it. Sure. All right, there's no releases. No. Yeah, there are. <sighs> yeah, you got to squeeze the thing. Oh, okay. Now it just falls right out. Way easy. Now, jump in. Just jump in. I know in my heart this comes out. You got a feeling? Oh, hang on. There's a dingus here. And it has. I'm back. A widget bit. Got it! <laughs> I mean, you can do that. I'm just going to take the whole mount out. Well, this side's different. Oh. This one's designed for stuff to go in. Oh. See, you got. You got a special one. Uh, no, it turns out I might have to dig a little so bit deeper cool. to get that. This is, this is the golden ticket. This is what we're in here for. That's what you're chasing? Yep, that's what we're okay. chasing.
I like guys that design things like this. Why? It's all just one consistent fastener. Yeah. Just this, other than those big flat thumb screws, just Phillips everywhere. Oh, this is bugging me. How do we... Give me that long one. No, no, just, oh, just on. Thank you. This comes out. This piece hides a million screws. There you go. And it comes out. Thank you. And yeah. I don't know how, but something holds this you in. And if we get this out... on the edge? Well, the door's open. Oh, that did more. Just those big ones. That big did ones. more. Hang on, I'm onto something here. Oh, it's hidden way down in there. How do... Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Yep. Got it. Okay. I'm going to need that. I tried. That one's not long enough. Sorry, you lost. Oh, it's like an inch too short. Give me that back for a moment. I'll give it right back to you. You liar. No, I just need to get this one up. All right, take that. Oh! 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 Ha! Oh! Hurry! What? Look at all the screws! Here, I'll trade you back. Hey, why? Because I don't need the long one now. I can just. Well, I don't need the long right one either. Here. Work your way right down the front. I screw faster than Harvey! <laughs> Too handy. <laughs> All right, now. Same on the inside here. You've got another rail. Well, here, let's, let's do the major the on the back. Well, I haven't got that. All right, well, That's just all you. start taking out every screw that you see that doesn't impact the big main frame inside. Yeah, that's out. still going on that? I had to do a bunch in the middle. Oh, did you? I didn't have to. I just ended up falling into it. Whatever lets you sleep at night. Well, I'm going to pull one of these locks off. Huh? I'm going to pull one of these locking systems off. Do it. I was taking out those screws on, on a couple over here. I think that's nifty. You got something cool there? Yeah. All right, we'll talk about it. Okay, can I grab that small driver? Huh? Can I grab that small driver? Yeah, sure. Just the end, no, no, just the driver piece. Because the impact driver, driver has a much smaller head, but yeah. with the long extension, it pretty much moves point. Hey, there's grease on there. Ah, uh, Harvey. You want, you need help. 
I think I got too much length here. Push back. You ready? Yep. Yeah, I need you in here with your shorter one. Get that bolt out right there. All right, let's go. There you go. Really high quality manufacturer. Really well built. Harvey? Yes. Get that one. I got another one of those stuck oh. in a bad spot. Okay. Right here. There's one down on the bottom of this side that I can't get. All right. Down bottom right where my hand is? Yeah, that's the one I can't get. Oh, you can't get either? Nope. Yeah, it's the exact same one I was having trouble with. Actually, with that driver, I can. You think? Yep. Give me that. I have a doubt. You give it a shot. Oh. No, Thank you. Oh, that bit and that head? Yeah. All right. Give that a go. Angled upside down. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I got, let me get these wires out of on this side, then that side. Yeah, you've got, I've got this wire yeah. thing. The wire thing. You are so helpful. Oh. Ah, got it. Hey, Harvey? Yeah? You gotta take the screws all the way out. Nah, that's what you're there for. Oh, there's so much sexiness in here. Where does... No, here we go. Huh. Oh, it's got a little monorail thing happening. I'm going for this caterpillar trap stuff. Track stuff. Oh, yeah. that. Yeah, there's a lot of that in here. Is it? We are getting down to the chewy goodness of the inner bits. We got a pair of dikes? Yeah. All yeah, right. cool. Couple of I'm going to start taking out zip ties. There's a lot of zip ties. Well, I'm going to keep trying to get this frame out. All right, you work on that. I'm going to try and unlace it. It is most sincerely in there. Hi. <laughs> this bit back here really looks like somebody said, hey, the Panduit rep was here last week and we got samples. Use hey. some of this. Because there's none anywhere else, but there's like two really obnoxiously located pieces down here. <laughs> let's, let's see where we can fit some of that Panduit stuff in there. Try that out. Let me know how that works. Their cable routing is top notch though. You like they, that? They, I like how they did the cabling on this. It's really well done. Every time I look at something, it's connected to three other things, and those. Again, I connected to three other things. Ah. Oh, what holds you in there? Spite. Nothing but rage. Come on out. There you go.
Another cable out. Oh, this is getting cleaner and neater by the moment. I'd like to point out we've gotten all this way, haven't had to cut a single wire yet. Not yet. Uh, we're not cutting wires. I hate these clips. You hate those clips? The gray ones? Gray Oh. Yeah, these suck. Okay. Like, they do their job really, really well. They're is excellent can, Is this something I can clips. simply cut off, or should I disconnect, like, disassemble all of that? What? Because I think it comes out through that gland. If you, you can just cut it off, but put the bottom half of the plug back on there so we don't lose it. Okay. Because that's actually useful. Hmm. So is this built on a standard uh, rack frame? Yeah, it looks to be a, a really high quality, but yeah, just They're a standard. Used off the shelf where they needed to. Yeah, just a standard 19-inch rack. Okay. I mean, it makes sense because it's probably going to go into an installation. It's a it's a really high quality rack. Yeah. Okay, so we're at a really cool point. Yeah. Okay. Where I can almost fit you inside here. Oh, I can totally fit in there. I can push you in. And then we I'm wheel, you outside, wheel right. you outside and dump you. <laughs> okay. All right, so the mission yeah. in this entire video is that we want this, this robot dingus. Yes. All right, so we can quit taking apart the other stuff because we don't care about that. We've, we're down, we've got all the yep. wires out, we did the thing down the back. So what we want to do is get this out as intact as possible. Okay. But I don't know how intact that's going to be. Uh, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it went in in pieces. But I want to yeah. get this robot out and then I want to talk about it. Okay. All right. Just keep swinging off it. That'll fix it. Yeah. <laughs> just keep swinging off it. That'll work. I'm just. I'm gonna keep banging it around. Well, the backs off its mounts. I think if I just take out those. Two. Hey, I'm. I'm all for it. Hey, Either dude, way, we get it on video. Some dude wandered off with my thing. I. I don't know what you do. It wasn't me. No, totally. Nope. I was here the whole time. So what are you going to be able to do with these big... With a like, robot? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. You know what I know? Yeah. It's really cool. That's enough for me. You know how you use Loctite on the threads of a screw, right? Yeah. And sometimes you put it up the edge to see if it's... to see if it's rotated or not? Yeah. You generally don't put it inside the Phillips connector. Yeah, that's bad. No, that's... Then, then I right, get angry. So the tops are entirely out. Hey. And... Okay. I'm working on the bottom. If I didn't have someone shaking it... Well, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm just checking you're, it out. You're really helpful. I'm, I'm a helper. Just go away and be helpful. Over. <laughs> oh, hey, I got the blue Loctite on the inside down See? here, too. I, what? What? I'm having fun. I'm helping. I'm a helper. Hey, Arby. Yeah. Monorail. Monorail. Hey. Isn't that neat? That's nifty. That's okay, nifty. so it can extract and rotate. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So we got to, where's, does this, uh, where does this That go? is part of my track. Yeah, where's the other end? Uh, I, it's in the track. Okay. Well, let's pull well, it can, out of the way. Well, it's, it's out of the way. Okay. I can't see I that side. I got nothing but so. faith in you. I can't see that side, so if you okay. can see anything worth pulling off. Yeah, it's cool. All right. I got... Well, I'm going to leave that there. Oh, that's the feed for the motor unit. I mean, actually, that whole thing can probably come off. I don't know if it should come off, but I'm going to pull it off. The whole power oh, module oh, oh, thing oh. there? I would, I would no, keep that together. No, I, you would, but... 
I ain't as smart as you. That's where you're supposed to correct me. What? No, never mind. Hey, it's cute that you thought I was listening yeah. to you in the first place. Yeah. I didn't hear nothing. Mm-hmm. Hey, Harvey. Yeah. Done this whole thing. Haven't cut one wire. Nope. That's that's quality manufacturing there. Yeah. They actually did this well. I've had things where I had to butcher my way into it. This, it's just hopping right along. Now, I think this wire here uh, is this wire here. Okay. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Right. You would be correct. And this, I don't, I don't know what this is. Oh, it goes in there. It's got to be important. Okay. That's probably positional. Cable track is out. Cable track is really cool. Ah. You got that little drop hand driver on you? Huh? You got that little hand screwdriver on you? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Take this wire your way. I'm going to put these really special screws back where they came from. And then I'll take your wire. <coughs> okay. Where's your wire? This one? That one? <coughs> oh, that one. <coughs> I think you've given me Australian typhoid. You know what Australian typhoid is? It's just a fever. It's just like normal typhoid, but down under. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, those both, both of those run through here. I need that. Can I, can I steal this? <coughs> you can have this anything is, you this want. This is mine? Okay, this is mine now. Because I've got, this one's mine. This one's mine. There, I got two. You should have two that or one three. Goes up. Oh, that's the door lock mechanism. Hey, where'd oh. these go? Where These went to the... Yeah, they went to the control. Where's I, the other I, end of these I go? I took it off. Uh, that goes in... Up to the... In, oh, that's the laser reader yeah. thing. Oh, we don't care about that no, anyway. So All right. I'm not bothering. Okay, so this is mounted to... Aha! I found them. One. Get anywhere? Oh, I'm making all kinds of stuff come out of here. Oh, I think, I think we're mobile. Well, this bottom... That box is? I think it is. Yeah, that moves. No, wait, All right, no. so how do we get the thing out well, without taking off the two big vertical bars? Need to get that down there. I think we we're going to have to take the bars off. I think I just disconnect this. There. No, wait, no, no. Nope. that help? Nope, nope, made it worse. Oh, God. There we go. Yeah, that moves. All right. We're gonna try and move the bottom towards you. Nope, that ain't enough. Nope. And that's all you get. I think we're gonna have to take it off the monorail. Monorail. Now, how do I do that? Now I'm oh. looking. Nope. Nope, that's. Is this what a separate piece from this? Yeah, but that doesn't look like a normal take screw. Take that out. No, it's not a screw. What is it? I think it's. Alan Allen or something? Huh? It's an Allen head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a Torx. No. Yeah, it's a Torx at about a T25 or T30. It is. Okay. Totally I is. I can grab one of those if you'd like. Drive a Torx. Okay. So. Hey. I brought the whole drawer. I made the thing move. You made the thing move. And the monorail thing goes hey. all the way around. Which it has to because that's how it picks up from the other side. Okay. Oh. I'm learning stuff here. You're getting smarter by the day. No, it's a different video series. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> Tell you what, if it's not the fourth one, I'm going home.
is the biggest belt I've ever It'd seen. Really like handy if any of these will mount. Oh, there we go. See? It's not hard. I had I had fingers in there. Did you? Yeah, for a moment. How many fingers you got? Uh, six. Ah, you can make a few more mistakes. All right, that. Here, let me see that. What? Let me see that. Why? I don't need the whole thing. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put it back in there. Oh, we'll put that back in there. I'm gonna take it out of the other I... side. Because it probably lives there. Oh, that's why. It's where it wants to be. Do you need the assistance of an adult? I need the wrench to go in the... They're in at this really uh, weird angle. If you want someone else to help you. I, I got this. You just gotta ask. Gotta learn to be open. Uh, there you go. Not all of us are built like a gorilla. Okay. That's okay. You'll get there. I am, I am a great and rugged man. Mmm. Is that out? I don't know. Oh, it's, it's out. It's hanging by the wire thing. There's a story about a cat, though. All right. So I've got zip ties on there. There's a gray widgy bit okay. there. All right. This should be totally free at this point. Can we get it out? Uh, I'm going to see if we can get it out. Back in towards your rock. Got it. Yep. Got it. And cables. Cables. Cables are good. Cool. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's attached to the thing. Ah, there. It's detached from the thing. Excellent. There's our first main rail. Now, I've got these cables running in behind the belt here, so I'm definitely not feeding them back this way. Okay. Do they disconnect from that motor? Yes, they do. Yeah, let me let me get there. I'm working my way down the zip ties. I had some. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, this is disconnected. I don't know where this goes. Okay, so you uh, got oh, it's a it's just a position sensor. Yep. That goes in behind the belt, so I don't think we're getting it out past there. Oh no, no, it should. Not past the belt, but maybe under it. Oh, it's cable tied. I'm just gonna bring that up here. Oh yeah, we can move those hey, now. Hey. They're disconnected. Yeah. There we go. You good? Okay, that's out. All right. Uh, hang on. Hang what? on. What's this? You just gonna leave that? This connected? is yeah. the laser dingus. So it. Can it's... we take these two screws out? I can try. Oh, lovely. There. All right, so we've got that. And that should be both rails. And make where do these wires go. All right, that should take the whole other drive unit out. Oh, they're awesome. That wants to be an inverted pendulum so bad. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Now, we have to do a bit of movie magic. Because you know what happens next? This pile of stuff all magically vanishes. And we'll get like a table or something. And we'll put the cool stuff on a table. And we'll talk about that. I have a feeling I have to do most of the magic. Yeah. Illegal immigrant. Hey. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Excellent. So we had all the cool parts that we wanted to show after mm -hmm. in detail. Yes. So we've got this. This is... Totally, this was, this was an awesome homemade pachinko game until the really mean director stole my ball. Something about, you have to start playing with the ball. So this is serious professional work that it's we're doing It's almost like your crew don't trust you. <laughs> she may have a little experience with this. Yeah, yeah. However, ah, I have tubes. That's so enough. we have, we have this, and this is the, the tray where the tape slots go. Do we have any of the trays? Did we actually the find tapes? any, any, no any tapes. of the tapes in there? No tapes. Oh, okay. no. 
I, I you lied to me. You no, told me it, there was some types in there. We have, well, I thought there was, but it turned out to be the slidey out thing that uh, was just different. Okay. Um, we have a couple tapes that I think fit this down in archives somewhere, uh, but. I, I'm uh, sure we can yeah. figure it but out. But the cool thing about this isn't this part. No. The cool thing is. On the back. The, God, there's no way to do this safely. So I'm just going to put it here. There's. I'm going to show that. Look oh. here. See this? This engages with the part that we'll be talking about in a bit, but I'll show it to you right now. So look in there, and there's a couple little tiny balls right in there. Yeah. And the balls are spring-loaded, so they go in here, and when you slam it together... It's upside down. Huh? Nope, nope, nope. What? What? It's that way. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So there's clippy things in there. Oh yeah, okay. Well here, I'll hold the drawer, you smack the thing in, because I can do one or the other, but you got it. There you go. Alright. So this is how it engages yeah. when it's in use. And the two balls are retention. Those yeah. are for the positive snap action. Correct. And then there's the, the release, which is a little hook. Yep. That's called a detent in my a world. Detent. A detent. Okay. That's what the little balls are. Alright, so we're gonna get rid of this, because it's huge. Yep. I'll just hand that off there and it'll magically disappear. And it won't make like any magic. noise. It won't make any noise at all. It just, it just vanishes. All right, so we get to talk about this. Yeah. Now there's a lot going on in this. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on here. We've got a custom-made circuit board. That's your pokey tool. I got a pokey tool! So we got a custom-made circuit board, yep. a little brain in it. Mm -hmm. And we know it's custom-made because if you look through the back, you can't really, they're, they're not gonna be able to read it, but yep. if you look through the back, in there on the circuit board, it says Overland Storage, okay. which is the name on the front of the box. So that tells us they made this. It was built to say. Yeah. yeah. And this has, we've got the mechanical detent, but this is just dumb. This yep. is, you push it and it holds it there. Yeah. Then we've got a little coil here, a little solenoid, mm -hmm. and this pulls the release lever. Yep. So to be able to open the drawers, that has to be in that position. Now, do you know why they've put two different methods of retaining the drawer in as opposed to one? Yes. Why? Because this is just a mechanical thing. Mm -hmm. This is to ensure that the drawer is in position when the robot goes looking for a tape. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is your mechanical lock, which is a lot more robust. It's a lot. It's a lot harder to. It's a lot harder to go wrong with it. This okay. is a much finer, much, much simpler system, which doesn't have that much strength to it. It just wants to hold the drawer in. Okay. So if they tried to make this a, a really robust single component, they've got a lot more engineering to do. This just has to hold that little edge of the piece of yeah. piece of aluminium. It probably doesn't have a sensor on it. Though. Oh, it has a sensor above well, it. Well, there's... Is there a sensor above it? No, that's just a piece Sorry. of plastic. That's, so the, that's just the lock a, can't a tell where the door is. Well, it can, though, because it's got these two sensors okay. down below. Yeah. And if you look here, there's two of them, If in we fact. didn't throw the drawer away. We can. <laughs> we can. So when the drawer... <laughs> When the drawer is in, it blocks these two sensors. Yep. Yep. Um, but this is what I think. Mm -hmm. This exists so that when you close the drawer, you get a good chunk. And exactly. It's in. It's a That's the purpose. It, it isn't just, oh, it's in far enough. It's, Correct. It's you push the door in, and when you push the drawer in all the way, it goes chunk, and it stays there, yeah. and it doesn't bounce back out. Yeah, because if you, have a lot of, um, if you have a lot of pressure this way, like outwards pressure on that little latch, your solenoid doesn't have enough power to retract. Yeah. So your positive detent is going to hold the drawer far it all enough the way in, in yeah. that this can retract and then you can release it. Okay. So they use two different mechanisms to do this. And same there's thing. a whole little brain here because they've got the solenoid happening, they've got two different sensors here, yep. there's, there's a lot going on and it all yep. feeds out on one cable. And that's that. And there's one of these for each drawer. So there's like six or eight of these. There was six drawers. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got that. Yep. Now, oh, we get two of those. We are totally scavenging these for parts. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, that, that style of system with a, a little solenoid that retracts a little thing yeah. um, is pretty much how most electronic strikes work. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. But they put a lot more engineering into them so that you can get things like X amount of kilograms or X amount of um, pounds of preload, which is someone pushing on the door, which is even with a lot of pressure on that little latch, it will still force open. Oh, but it's okay. a whole lot more complex engineering. So if a dude's like leaning into the door while he's trying to swipe his card, or it'll wind, still work. Like wind, wind pressure, okay, like yeah. tunnels. Yeah, okay. but it's a whole lot more complex engineering. So we haven't these... experienced any super breezy no. tunnel doors lately. No. So these guys can do it a whole lot simpler by putting a big detent system in it. All right. So the next thing we have oh. is this, which is just sexy. This, I wish this was. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't know if this would work or not. Well, look at the back. We've got a bunch of Molex. Yep. 
And we've got a couple big ATX plugs. Now, they were they were 24 pin plugs on the cable, but only 20 pins were being used. Okay. I want to check these out on the spec and see if we could actually use this on a computer yep. because I have kind of a beefy computer. Mm -hmm. And this is neat because what this is on the front, this is a cool concept that a lot of people aren't really familiar with. This is a dual redundant hot swap power supply. Yeah. So here's how it works. In most applications, there are exceptions, but it's really mm -hmm. rare. In most applications, these are both on and running and they're using 50% or less than their rated power. Okay. So if these each output, let's say round numbers, these are 2,000 watt power supplies. Mm -hmm. They're not, but we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, you are totally cool to use these as long as each one is using less than 500 watts at any given time. Mm -hmm. The reason for this is, is a power supply is something that has a, a lower MTBF, there's a term, Wikipedia that, um, than a lot of the other components in the system. So if one of these dies, you don't want to have one power supply that craps out and the whole system dies. What you have is two power supplies and you're, you're grooving along and everything's cool and then one of them eats it. Okay, it's like been five years and your power supply dies. So instead of having the whole system just crap out, this is set up in such a way where when this supply dies, this one just takes over the full 100% of the load and it just keeps on grooving. And, and a light will come on yeah, or an alarm I'd will sound or that. something. It'll say danger, danger somewhere. Yeah. If it's really smart, it'll even send you a text message. Oh. And then a dude comes along, opens this up, and this all happens without turning the machine off. You reach in, you grab this, you pull out the power supply, which just hooks in with that one connector. There's even instructions on yeah. top. That they to, tell you how to remove the power supply. To help people like me. Uh, you, after you've removed you, you the You have to take supply. it out to read the instructions, but yeah. they're there. So you take the power supply out, you grab your new power supply. That's the same one. Yeah, but it doesn't know that. They all look alike. <laughs> all right, so you pop that in. Yep. You flip it over, you put your retaining thumb screw in. And the system will automatically and the system just migrate both. Yep, and now you're, you're at 50-50. Okay. And life is good. So Excellent. it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Um, you'll also notice on these power supplies, there's no input on the supply. The inputs come from over yeah. here. There will be down in here, usually, some smart stuff that tells yeah. it when that one died, side. what to switch over, all that jazz. That's, that's handled internally. Yeah. So, and we learned that this is a Sun Power Model 0340. Yeah, the whole box is yep. branded Sun Power. A lot of the yeah, circuits there's... on the back here are branded Sun Power as well. Yep. So, that's, this is a cool, sexy thing that we're going to keep for robotics. Okay, cool. Um, cool. We, we, we got six of those? Or two of them? I think we got two of those. I think those two large and, and then we got a different one that I wanted to look at. But I have it right here. Okay. So, if we wait a minute, that'll magically vanish. Will it? Yeah, watch. That was very subtle. You like that? That was insane. All right, subtle. so these are riveted in. Yep. There's stuff on the back. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's power on is the front. Is it heavy? It is. Is it heavy like has it batteries? It is not in as it? heavy as the other one. It, okay. No, it's not. It's definitely not batteries heavy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's going on here. And I don't know how much we can get in because there's so much of this is riveted together. Mm -hmm. So we might so just have to poke this. And the other ones were, were taking your uh, 110. What are they coming in? Your input voltage is anywhere between 100 and 240, so it'll run on anything. Yeah. Is it possible that this is just um, filtering, well, I filtering think this main is, powers? Well, this says on the box 400 watts max. Mm -hmm. The DC output is 3.3, 5, 12, 12, you know, like that. Okay. So I think this is just a power supply without all the hot swap mojo. This is just a power supply. So the question is, if there's the ability for backup power supplies, is there also the ability for a backup power supply housing? Is this just in there in case one dies? In case one of the... Uh, I don't think so, because these are riveted shut. You can pull them out. Not field serviceable though. We can pull. This yeah, we, you can pull them out if you drill That's out. That's true. The if there was field serviceable, think, it would be. Screwed. I think this is just a a single power supply where, as an option on the unit, mm -hmm. they could give you another dual redundant power supply if you wanted one. But the people who bought this particular machine just got one set of redundants and one regular power supply, and this okay. is just a regular one. And they oh, reuse the okay. same housing. Oh, okay. So this is. A, yes. Okay. That yeah. that make sense. That's my theory. So All this right. would be their own internal built. Yeah. Custom one as yeah. opposed to I the think this is just a really big 400 watt computer power supply. Okay. So you, well, I mean, it's it's just Phillips heads. Do you want to pull that top Yeah, off? but there's, well, 
Those aren't actually going to get us in anything, though. I mean, we can try, but we're, all we're going to do is pooch a power supply. Because those Phillips heads there mm -hmm. don't hold the case on. They're what things inside are mounted to because on this side, you can see it's rounded over. So we'd have to go all the way down here, okay. and those are spot welded. Okay. So we're not going to we're we're not going to get anywhere. What are you doing? I'm just looking. You just oh okay. There is nothing in that. Yeah. No. It's 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 just the backboard. Yeah, that's a big hole. It's just the backboard. It's an empty box. So it's an empty box. There's some stuff in the back. It's just a placeholder. No. Huh? It's empty, but. All right, these two power feeds yes. go straight through to the back, and on the back, there's a little switching power supply mojo happening here. Okay. So this just really feeds out like 12 volts and 3 volts, and it's rock simple, just but that's nice all there is to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to get next? on to the next thing. Okay. okay. I can just put that on the floor if you'd like. You could be doing I that. I have floor. Okay. Okay. So we have, now there were six of these in there. Yes. These were the tape drives. This is the, yeah, this is the tape drive. And you can see they took the door off it because you don't really need it in that environment. So these were internally mounted. The robot is the only thing that feeds into these? Yeah, these they, don't move. Yeah. The, the robot, which we'll talk about in a minute, comes down mm -hmm. and it, it lines up and, yeah. and it crams the tape in there. And when it's done, the tape pops out and the robot comes up and grabs yep. it. Yep. So yeah, but this is really just a standard. There's nothing special about this drive at all um, except how it's mounted. So okay. what they do is they take, this is a regular drive, this yes. part, yep. okay, and it's a full height. You can see it takes two spaces. And it's mounted on these two rails. And it's mounted on two rails, and it plugs into this, and That's this it. is where all the magic happens. Yeah. This, it's tucked in the bottom here, but there is, there's a plug down here. Oh. And you can see that. And that plug, remember the little cards that we played Hell Getting Out? The bottom cards? Yes. This slides in, and when it slides in all the way, uh, this plug engages. Cards. So you, these are also hot swappable. Yeah. Okay. That's, so you just take out the two thumb screws and yank it out the back, toss it in the bin, grab a new one, Place and off you go. Yeah. But it's just a tape drive. There's nothing, we, mm -hmm. could, we could take it apart. Uh, but I think that's more than we want to get to in this in video. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's just a tape drive. Okay. It's a good future autopsy though. Excellent. All right. Now to control the robot, the drives, all the mojo, it needed a brain. This is the brain. Now it's, it's four little cards, and we've got the SCSI channels here mm -hmm. that feed off. These went to the individual drives. Yeah. And then we've got Ethernet ports. These three are all Ethernet. These three are serial, and it's RS-232. You can see they're labeled mm -hmm. there, RS-232. And then down here we've got fiber. Oh. And then there's another one here. This one is RS-232, and then a Neo management port. So there's this is the brain node that controlled everything. Yeah, this is this is the only controller unit we found in there. Okay. Not a lot to it, just some basic cards. Um, there's some memory in there, so there's there's a buffer happening. And again, following what we've found in the other stuff, let's, this is all going let's to be open this up. proprietary hardware. I want to check one out. Okay. Now we can't gut it because we have dreams of doing something with this. Oh. Well, not with this part. We don't need this part, so we're cool. And the screws go way in there. Do you just want to undo these ones then? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to get there. Oh. I'm going to take out the two middle cards because mm -hmm. those are the ones that appear to have memory. Okay. Boop. That's nice and, and easy. Wow, that's sexy. Look at that. These should be the same. So we've got a big memory chip. Well, let's see how big the memory chip is. Oh, oh, what? Right. I got, what? I got, I got what? What? I got floaty bits. You got no floaty bits are bad. I well, that's a heat sink. That was probably important. Once. Well, it, it, it may have been. I don't know. I got a memory chip here that is a Kingston memory chip, and it doesn't say how big it is, but I'm sure one of the people watching at home can tell me how big it is. Somebody who knows more about chips than I do. Dave would know. But yeah, it's just. Just a regular memory chip, nothing special. I like the mount. Mount's kind of cool. That'll be fine. Putting this on a 
big stainless steel table, yeah. that won't hurt it at all. Not a problem It'll at all. It'll be fine. All these delicate little chips. I should, I should rub yeah. these memory chips a bit. Yeah, make sure you don't touch those. Yeah, I'll rub the back of it. Rub that them on helps. your shirt. Oh yeah, that yeah. helps. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a great idea. It's the best way to clean them. And cool. Yeah, now I get all the dust off. Yep. And now I can put them in right with the other one. And yep. the person using it won't know which is which. What are you yep. doing? I'm trying to get this out. Are you looking for the thing missing the memory chip? No, I or know missing where it the is. heat sink? Where? where that is. It's the CPU down at the bottom. Did you take all the screws out? I tried. You tried to take nah, the screws out? I'm not very good at this. Yeah. That's why I make the big money right there. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is the one missing it? I think so. This is an Intel chip. It's a. GC80303, SL57T, Malay, L4520162-1796, Intel made in 2000. Hmm. It's American made. Sorry. What you got? Did you do that? I don't believe I did. Because I let you pull this out. I didn't do that then. I didn't damage any plugs taking it out. They're, uh, they're all double push. Do we know what, why this was given to us? Or why it was taken out of service? It's old. It wasn't because wasn't somebody started ripping heat sinks off? It's entirely possible. I think the heat sink fell off yeah. and th one of the many we, horrible we, transport mechanisms hey. the box used to get here. Yeah, we, <laughs> we might have taken it outside. <laughs> Driven along some concrete. Hear that magical sound? Oh, is that? Oh, oh. That's, that's got glue on it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, um, that can go. That can we'll go. get on to the next one. Now we get into the cool stuff. Ooh. This, this is, this is where things finally get really interesting. This is what we were digging that. for. Now we can take. We don't. We don't even need. No good will come of this. Uh, chip on my shoulder. Just. That fast, I'm ready, right there. Mm -hmm. Do this all day. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got our strain relief yep. that we don't need on these cables that we don't need. So this is the monorail that was horizontal? That was yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get rid of some of the extra bits so we can really focus on that. Oh, God. I thought you said you weren't the one breaking chip. I wasn't. Breaking connectors. Finally got that Glad chip you got off that my chip shoulder. Off shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> the... the Plug things pooched, so we can get rid of that. All right, so what we've got here, this is the heart of the robot, mm -hmm. okay? And it rides on, we've got these two huge vertical riser reels, yes. and these mount it here and here, and they take this up and yep. down. Okay. So here's how it works. You've got the two side pieces filled with tapes. Yes. All right. And this would run in between it? And this runs up and down in between it. Mm -hmm. So the mission of this thing is to grab a tape from off on the side, mm -hmm. pull it in, bring the tape down, and the drives are on the back. And they so, were all stacked vertically above? Yep, yep. Yep. So this little thing reaches out and grabs the tape, and if I turn the thing... Oh, it's got little hooks on yeah, it. Yeah, see the little carriage? All right, so the little carriage comes out. Here's... Here's a little carriage. You can see a little hook thing comes out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that comes out. That grabs the tape, yep. and it pulls the tape into the dingus. Okay. So now we've got the tape in the cart. Yes. Then this takes it down to the height of the appropriate drive, and the height, the z-axis, is controlled by these. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are just two motors with belt drives, and there's a little follower thing down on the bottom that that, that handles the height. Mm -hmm. When it gets where it wants to go. This brings it down to here, and now we go from this track to this track. Yeah, to a little standalone one. And then this whole widgie bit turns around. Mm -hmm. You know what I think? What? I think the drives were at this end. I think you're right. I th <laughs> no, because this has to turn 90. Yeah, but I think the drives were at this end. Oh, no. Keep thinking. Because no. You can't, you can't no. do that. So, so what a, we, can, we can 180 it here, but how do we get to the back? Hmm. 
because the drives are out the back of the box. Yeah. And this can only turn Wait a minute. I've got it. Okay. Hit me. Watch. Ah. You know where I learned this? Mm -hmm. I used to play with toy trains. Trains. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. There. Okay, so now it points to the back. Okay. Okay. And then and this motor here lets you move back and forth so you can pick which side your drive is on. Yes. Okay. And then this little motor here turns the drive and it poops the tape out. Pushes it back out. Um and then when it's done. Doop -doop 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 -doop. Monorail. And it goes back and selects another drive. Yep. Now there's a little is that a little laser diode on the top? This that it have is... to be for identification. Well, this here, down in here, you can see the window. That's okay. a barcode reader. Yes. So the tapes have barcodes. Mm -hmm. This is a proximity sensor. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's got that distinctive look of a proximity sensor. And it feeds right into here. Yeah, so it's three-way prox sensor. Okay. Um, and we've got a lot of these down in robotics. You see these used for door sensing. You see them okay. used for package sensing, stuff like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty standard thing. So to do all this needs this motor here for the turntable. Mm -hmm. One motor to move it back and forth. One motor to move it in and out. Yep. Um, there's there's a lot going on here. So that's that's the main robot part. This is kind of a cool bonus little find in there. Pretty common in big machines. Oh yeah. I believe we've got one. Of, we've got a heap of that on some of the CNC machines. Yeah, we do. Um, the SR is just covered yeah. in it. Except and, it's, yeah, it's, quite it's way way beefy. Um, and this is just a cable way. Mm -hmm. With a caterpillar setup, so this would have been for the for the robot as it was going up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, like this would mount somewhere in this. I believe that. Yeah, that. Yeah, would yeah this part moved. Yeah. So this this lets you get wires to the robot that won't get tangled in yeah. anything, and it protects them from abrasion and all that. Jazz. And they've got specific. Yeah. Amount of turn radius. Thanks. Hey, that didn't somewhere. hurt at all. You've got two. You can sure. you can lose one. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, there's there's so a, you can never crimp the cable. Yeah, no it, what. it protects everything. Excellent. All right, set that aside. Cool. Now we found while oh, we're talking about cables, yeah. we found a bunch of these, which are wicked cool. These are male and female IEC cables, mm -hmm. and they would just go from the from the external of those modular power supplies back up into the frame. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, frame handles power routing. And they are it's really bad, really bad way to make an extension cable. This is the best computer extension cable ever. Nope. Hey. You missed one. You missed no, one. No, no, watch, one. watch. You oh, missed one. I did. Okay, so what we do, got an idea. Okay. So you, you plug one of these into the wall. Yep. Okay. And you, get, and you, you wait get for the, it to fill with electrons. You wait it to fill electrons. Yep. And then you plug it together, and then you drop the whole thing in a thing of liquid helium. And you got your superconducting. There's, there's our Cause, cause the low budget collider. Because the right electrons there. can't get out, can they? Yeah. They're it's it's a forever. That makes sense. It's my cyclotron. Low budget. You got to get a magnet. So we take here. We'll, oh, you take the magnet some magnets. puts the electrons in. No, the magnet makes the electrons move. So you got to oh. move the magnet. Well, but, only move it one but way. But you've got. Well, you got to hold. You've got no. You've got to get a You've got to get a single pole right magnet. There. Ooh, hey. Oh god. Hey, whoa. Look at that. Uh, no, no. That's movie that magic right there. How does that work? Okay. There's a guy so there, under the got, table. We've got the magnetic field, and we've yep. got our conductor. We just made a cyclotron. Excellent. See, there's lots of uses for old cables. Just made a cyclotron. <laughs> All right, so we've got this. Yeah. It's a little large. Are you all right with that? I'm fine. All right, so this is the longest belt of this type I've ever pulled out of a machine. This, mm -hmm. Because I've, I've pulled a lot of these kind of belts. I mean, this is, timing belts in cars are like this now. Mm -hmm. But this is the longest one I've ever seen, especially for being so thin. And the whole idea here is we have a motor. It's not going anywhere. We got a motor. Mm -hmm. Here's the motor. Here's the gear drive. You can Because the shaft comes out. Yep. Not, so, so, you, so you know there's a little gear, yep. reducer, yep. gear reduction drive here. And then there's this shaft. This coupling is just a big spring. 
yeah. the middle. So this handles shaft misalignment and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into here, which is probably just a big tooth gear yeah. that grabs this, and then that drives this up and down the shaft. Mm -hmm. Now this is we. These are going to be rotary encoders. We've got and the wires off And this was just powered off, off one of the Molex connectors on the back of. Yeah. The so coming off the motor, we've got a couple wires here. Yep. So these are going to be encoder mm -hmm. data there. Um, though I don't know, these are big wires. I got three big wires, I got a bunch of little wires, and then I got a handful of wires here. So this could be, this could be power to the motor. Okay. And if there's three wires, then it's a simple, you know, three wire brushless motor. And this could be an encoder for one thing, and this could be an encoder for another thing or something like that. I don't really know. Okay. But the only wires that go to this is this. It is the Molex power, yeah. And... Were there any control circuit? Yeah, yeah, there were. There's another plug that's all pooched out. So we gotta, okay. we gotta figure out this motor, and I'm gonna give you some numbers here. Okay. It is a, I'm well, right. it says right on it, 12 volts DC, 600 CPR, 19.7 to one ratio, 326, 2004. The motor number, like the model number, mm -hmm. is GN2342A, 149-R2, I think that is way buried in there. I think this is just a DC motor. I tried to write that down, but my pen doesn't work. <laughs> it's okay. There are people watching this yep. on the internet. <laughs> I think it'd be really cool if we found out that we just put 12 volts on two of these wires, because there'd be three, because it'd be reversing. Mm -hmm. And this thing takes off and starts moving. There is a, a little controller module that we'll have to work You want to try some science to this? Do you want to do it here? Let's just cram 12 volts in it and see what happens. OK. Because it says it's 12 volt motor. So if we ignore all the encoder mojo, I got to mm -hmm. get that. Oh, you got to squeeze that there. All right. OK. Um, what am I pushing? We want the big test leads. Do you see the big test leads anywhere? Uh, there are some big test leads on the ground. Grab them. Yeah, they're, the ones that are plugged right in there. Yep. All right. Somebody, somebody put a heap of robot stuff on it. Yeah, I know. We'll have to set this on its side so nothing hits. All right. There we go. All right. Yeah, this will be fine. Which buttons do you want me to press? Uh, don't you mind that. Okay. I'm going to see if I'm I can find us a pair of probes. I'm going to hold this. OK. Just, just hold on to that for a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what I can find for probes. Hey, I got probes. I don't need all the probes. I just need these specific probes because these have the old school ends on them. Mm -hmm. That'll reach. All right, unplug those two and stick these in the holes. See if they fit. No, 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 no. Screw oh. that down. Just pull. Oh. Yep. Now stick the red in the red and the black in the blue. All right. Now you want to reach that one, that one, that one, and that goes up to 15 volts. So we'll just go for like six volts. Okay. Now understand we got 20 amps behind this mm -hmm. before they pop. Mm -hmm. Big spark. Cool. Yeah. So let's not do that. Um, now I don't know polarity at all, so I'm just going to stick my positive right in the middle and see what happens. All right. So you got to come over this way a little bit. All right. Now. If this works, that's going to move. If this yep. doesn't work, there will be OK. The third option is nothing happens, but that almost never happens. Suspense is killing me. Nothing's happening. I got nothing. I got nothing you got anywhere. Nothing. I'll put ground in the middle. Because it's DC motor, so you'd think it'd work backwards. I got nothing. I got nothing. So we'll hmm. look up the schematics for it and okay. hope we didn't just kill it. All right, flip any one of those off. There you go. There you go. So I want to play with this. I want to explore this because what I desperately want is another one. Because mm -hmm. if we had three yeah. Delta robots, Big Delta Robot, giant Delta Robot of Doom. Mm -hmm. And that could be way, way, way cool. 
that's that's the kind of thing where we hand this off to the robotics team and and Sam and his gang just go nuts. Okay. So I might reach out to Overland and see if they have this as a parts module somewhere. So I know what a Delta is. What would they possibly make with one? Do you want to make a three foot tall three D printer? Oh. Yeah. You work. could do that. You yeah. could make a three with with this. You can make a three D printer with a three foot tall build volume, probably closer to five foot tall build volume. Yep. And given the the height of these, you could easily get that out to like three three feet square. Okay. And well, three feet circular mm -hmm. for a delta. But yeah, there's there's big fun to be had with this. And we've got another one right here. It's quite so, sizable. Yeah. This is this is big fun. Okay. This is fun of great length. All right. So that's it. That's everything. And that's this is this is what we wanted was the okay. core robot. I think I remember seeing the controllers for these because they were bolted to the sides. Um, so we'll have a look through All right. the bits that we've got left. We'll do, we yeah, we got to dig. Does that one parts. have it connected? Nope. No, they've both been pulled? Yep, okay. they're both exactly the same. Okay. There's a little stack cool. of stuff. Here. Oh, that's just protectors for the bottom. All right, so that's the video. Excellent. All right. That was it. Well, thank you. Thank no, you. Thank you guys you. have fun. That's our exploration and teardown of the big Overland Data Archive unit. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Javi. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.